then, uh, in 1918, he's in Chicago. And Cleofonte Campanini, who is the, uh, lead, the, the uh, president of the uh, Chicago Opera Company, offers him $1,000 a night to sing the role of Eliezer in La Juive, uh, the, uh, the opera. And you all know the story. He turns it down. And this caused an incredible sensation. Uh, this, by the way, is the uh, actual letter of Chicago Opera Association. Uh, the part of the Eliezer, uh, he says, uh, it'll, the Jewess will be sung by Rosa Raisa, who is a Jewess. And he wouldn't have to sing on his Friday night. His salary for each performance would be $1,000 and railroad fare. Of course, there were no planes in those days. <laughs> to and from Chicago, and he turns it down. Now, this caused a sensation not only among Jews, but among non-Jews. I mean, uh, you know, the image of the Jew, money grabbing, and so forth. This was absolutely astounding. <coughs> Here, it says, come Yosela, $1,000 a night. Here, it says, Rosenblatt. <laughs> this says, grand opera. <laughs> going after him. And he, he said, uh, uh, the house of worship is where I belong. Uh, one of his sons wrote a biography of his, and, and in that biography, he said, my father said, a voice within me said, no, Yesla, you belong at the Omid. You know, at the Omid, which is uh, you know, the, the place where, where you do prayer. And there were accolades and accolades, but uh, just came to Rosenblatt, has upheld the honor of the American synagogue. And what he has done is really Kiddush Hashem. Needless to say, he has done a great service to his own colleagues by strengthening their position. And, and these are other uh, accolades about it. So uh, in essence, he actually uh, gained a wider audience, if you will. Uh, the reason I bring this in, I know you're all New Yorkers, and you really don't know about Long Branch? Anybody know about Long Branch? Yes. It's near Asbury Park. Yes. Okay. And uh, Malofsky, who is one of my favorite characters, Rabbi, people are always asking me, who's your favorite? One of my favorites is Shmuel Malofsky, who was very, very close with uh, Rosenblatt. In 1992, I interviewed the Malofsky, uh, four of the Malofsky uh, surviving children, and they said every summer they went to Long Branch with the Rosenblatt uh, family. Uh, for summer vacations. And the reason I put in Ocean Grove, it, there's a little town between Asbury Park and Bradley Beach that's owned by a church. And they have a huge concert hall. And every summer, I don't know how this worked out, but Rosenblatt <laughs> sang in that uh, Ocean Grove uh, arena, if you will. And here's a picture of Rosenblatt with Malofsky. Have any of you heard the Malofsky girls? Uh, no. Fantastic. You'll have to listen to my, my show one day. Okay, now, what is the greatness of, uh, of what he did? He brought about the golden age of Chazanus. Prior to 1920, when uh, Sorota, Hirschman, and Fortin came to the States, you had Rosenblatt, but you did, yes? My great uncle is Gershon Sorota. Really? Yeah. Oh, do you have his recordings? I have it on tape, uh -huh. but I don't have any of his regular records. Uh -huh. In fact, I want to know, he's still selling all the records. His family, he died with his family in Warsaw in 1943. Yes. Who's collecting, who's, who's behind all of it? Uh, and I tr I've been trying to research, I mean, there's so many, so many articles about him. And yes. I've been trying to research his early years, and that you know that he was married. Talk to, to me later, because I know somebody who's uh, working on on just what you're talking about. Perfect. Yeah, I, I've all my <laughs> uh, I know he was a very famous uh, cantor. So a lot of people think he's the greatest. Was, they also wanted him to, you know, just very famous. I don't, I don't know the name. Opera singer said he was so happy that he decided oh, yes. to it sing. It was Russo. Yes. Yes, it was That's Russo. What happened was uh, these uh, Hirschman, Corton, Reutemann, Pinchik, uh, Schor, Schlusky, they came to this country, they stayed here. But uh, Sirota went back to Poland, and unfortunately, in 1943, in the uprising of the Warsaw Ghetto, he and his entire family were murdered. And it was, uh, it was a very, very uh, sad, sad situation there. 
And so you had the early golden age. I, I just define that if you're born before 1900. Okay, it comes 1922. Campanini now works for 3,000 a night. He still turns it down. Now here's the tra tragedy in his life. Some unscrupulous, I hate to say it, Jews, convince him to back a newspaper called The Light of Israel. And as they uh, positioned it, they said, this is going to help bring Jews back to Judaism or whatever. And he signed personally. As a matter of fact, they told him, don't tell your wife about this. And his brother, Rosenblatt's brother, was also his business manager. He said, don't tell your brother, because they'll just say no, you know, but uh, they won't recognize this for the great thing it is. What happened was they sucked him dry. They just robbed the whole, uh, the whole business, put him into, into debt, and he had to declare bankruptcy. He goes bankrupt in 1925. He owes $190,000 to today's dollars, $5 million, $6 million. He's forced to go into Vaudeville. Now, as I mentioned before, Vaudeville was on its way out uh, because you had <coughs> radio, the rise of radio in the 20s, so people didn't have to go uh, into those, uh, those parlors. And also, film started to, uh, to advance. But we'll get to that in, in just, a, just a second. So he's forced to go into Vaudeville. He did three shows a day. Kaylee Kaylee in Hebrew, Volga Boltman in Russian, Last Rose of Summer in English, and La Campagna in Italian. As I said, by the way, he was fluent in, in all those, uh, those languages. Uh, three shows a day. He pretty much pays off most of the, well, he's cleared a couple of years later, but to do three shows a day, uh, you know, uh, even I guess on Friday he had to do one or two shows. Now, the jazz singer, in 1927, Warner Brothers offers him $100,000 to play the role of the, the father uh, in The Jazz Singer. He turns it down. Now, you know who uh, uh, was in, the, in that movie? I guess you can see it here, uh, Al Jolson, okay? <laughs> program from 1928, 
it's Yiddish, Yiddish, English, Spanish, Hebraish, Spanish, Italianish, Hebraish, Yiddish, Hebraish. So he he was he, he was an all around guy. I mean, this is uh, an actual uh, uh, program from, from that year. I'll have Tzedek uh, now offers him 9,000 because uh, Archie Swarb runs out of money. So now it's 1933. He's penniless. And I talked about the, uh, the two things that were sort of uh, coincidental in my life. Uh, collecting his records, that my father was from Bukovina. In 1964, after I graduated law school, I picked up and I said goodbye to America. And I got onto this boat called the Volcania. And that's the same boat that Rosenblatt took to Israel in 1933. So that was, that's uh, the third Beshert uh, uh, factor that why I'm doing this today. <laughs> OK. Uh, he's going there to film Dreams of My People. Here you see scenes of him. He's overlooking uh, the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, you do know that the Kotel, there was only a, an alleyway here of about 30 feet. Right about here, there were buildings. Uh, of course, you know, when Israel was independent uh, in 67, but all that was torn down, and uh, you had the plaza. When I was in Israel in 1964, we couldn't, you, you all know this, you have this experience yourself, you couldn't go to the Kotel. Uh, I, I remember standing by a barbed bar wire fence in Jerusalem and was warned, don't go too close or the Judeans will shoot you. Now today we take it for granted, but I mean, just 67 is how many years ago? 33, 43, 50 years ago. 50 years ago, look at how the world has changed. Here he is uh, on the Jordan River. Uh, this is at the Mara Hamachpela, the grave of the patriarchs. You know, in those days, the Arab, uh, Muslims wouldn't let you go beyond the 13th step. Uh, if you've never been to Hebron on Chai Sarah, 25 to 30,000 people congregate. Chai Sarah is the uh, portion of the week where uh, the uh, uh, burial site is purchased. Uh, that, that's the, uh, the Parsha. And uh, it never gets reported. You know, all you hear about are rather negative things about uh, Hebron. And of course, if you've been to Israel lately, you know this great tragedy. Uh, Kevin Rachel, Rachel's tomb, you can't see this today. I mean, this is Rosie Ball here. If I should bring a picture, there is a gigantic wall, 30 feet high, that surrounds Rachel's tomb because these wonderful. What am I? That's an Arab on a, on a donkey. But our dear brothers uh, on the road to Bethlehem uh, <coughs> were, were, were killing uh, uh, visitors to Rachel's tomb. So. Rather than go after the perpetrators, we put a nice big wall, and you can't even see it anymore. And here is the last picture of Rosenblatt alive in the old city. Uh, these are uh, flyers for different concerts. Wherever he went in the world, he did free concerts for this yeshiva, that yeshiva. Uh, it was an amazing thing uh, how he, how, how his charity uh, was just. Uh, uh, legendary. He dies at the age of 51 on June 19th, 1933. And here, I don't know if you can see this, this is Tantron Edison. Now, isn't it, it's interesting that uh, this concert, two days after, uh, after he was, uh, um, uh, he died, uh, he was supposed to sing at the uh, Edison Theater, uh, Rabbi Yosef Rosenblatt. It's an actual ticket from, uh, from that uh, concert. He's buried under the uh, Mount of Olives, RS-18. This is a death notice. And if you want to talk about tragedies, this is a letter from Rabbi Cook to Kvartin, Zalva Kvartin, to lend Taubler money to return to the United States. Esrim v'chamesh lirot, 25 pounds of lirot. To, to lend her that money or give her that money to get back to the States. So, uh, you know, he never really did get out of a, a financial jam. 
So he had eight children. Uh, this is a picture of Rosenblatt and his wife. Uh, there were two daughters and five, um, three, three daughters and five sons. Okay, Samuel, Leo, Nettie, Gertie. Now, Paul Dennis. Paul Dennis was a, uh, an opera singer uh, at the Met. He did not want to be accused of uh, living off of his father's reputation. So he changed his name to Paul Dennis. He was n not nowhere near uh, as great as his father was. Uh, you see Ralph at the, uh, at the end, 1913 to 2006. Uh, what happened was uh, in uh, 2002, a friend of mine, uh, Benny Rosnitsky, and I formed Cantor's World. Some of you may have ever heard of it. We ran concerts in Lincoln Center, uh, and our first concert was a tribute to Rosenblatt, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, but we also, have you heard of Health God? I guess oh, some of you have heard of Health God. Uh, we produced at the Metropolitan Opera six years later, uh, in, in 2008, uh, at the Metropolitan Opera, just health got and New York Philharmonic. We sold out, and we lost a lot of money, but that's a, another story. Okay, so here he has, uh, Sam has his grandsons, uh, Rabbi Jonathan, Rabbi Andrew is in Canada. My name is Ralph Rosenblatt. I'm the youngest of eight children. We were five boys and three girls. Sometimes I'm introduced as just the Rosemont son, and <clears throat> I get this. Please don't tell me I know the son. Why well, I have to have to apologize for my yichus, my young yichus? I'm the only American born. We were five, five nations in the family. Papa was born in Russia, mom in Poland. The first three were born in what was then Pressburg, Hungary, Austria, Hungary, but became Bratislava, Czechoslovakia. And Pop at all times needed money. And so he, there was a position open in Hamburg, and the next four of us were born in Hamburg. And the following year, there somebody came over in 1911 uh, to uh, just to attend the services of a, a New York businessman. He fell in love with Pop's voice, and he invited him to come to New York. And in 1911, <clears throat> Pop came to New York, and, went, and he sang in the Norfolk Street Shul. A year later, yours truly came into this world. So, I am at the present time 90 years young. to uh, some of us <laughs> up in Riverdale to uh, 
uh, in concert, and we hear a young chassid singing, and we look at each other and we say, he's going to be a surprise guest on our, on our uh, concert. Now, some of you may or may not know this young fella. I'll, just, I'll play a, a, a minute or two of the Kale Morley, uh, and he, uh, the house went crazy over this guy. <laughs> secondary uh, hobby 
of collecting comedy, not just Jewish comedy, but any comedy. And so about eight weeks ago, I added a third album, and I just take a whole album, When You Love the Whole World is Jewish, some of you, you know that one, the fall from Long Island, you, you know, okay. Rabbi, we got to have that comedy uh, here sometime in the future. Anyway, so I, I have uh, another collection of, uh, of Jewish comedy and non-Jewish comedy. The problem is, I can't play most of it on the ground because Jackie Mason, his language, if you listen to it closely, his language is horrible. And, uh, I mean, it, it, he got worse. Uh, years ago, he didn't curse as much. Uh, everything was uh, this or that. Anyway, uh, I, I welcome you to uh, uh, log on. No commercials, a lot of fun, and that's it. If you have any questions, can we listen to some Rosenblatt? <laughs> yes. Uh, it was yelled at because I know to play enough of Rosenblatt.
Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you.